there are a lot of cars on the market, and so manufacturers have had to come up with more and more inventive ways to describe their products. Some definitions use a bit of poetic license, like four-door coupe, and other definitions vary according to which car nerd you ask, like fastback. But out of all the three-letter acronyms and clever product descriptions that exist in the world today, none of them was good enough for Suzuki to describe their Ertiga. This, according to the Japanese manufacturer, is an LUV, which stands for Life Utility Vehicle. They say it's got the space and practicality of an MPV, but the ease of use of a regular road car, which to most people means it's a crossover. But anyway. Being a utility vehicle, it is bigger than normal, even though it is based on Suzuki's tiny Swift platform. And those jeans stand out from the front, where it looks a bit like a Swift that's had an allergic reaction. And the back is almost the complete opposite, with relatively small taillights in a vast expanse of metal and glass. But in a car like this, its style is dictated largely by its utility application. Sorry, its life utility application. For example, those impossibly large rear doors may look a bit incongruous, but they're fantastic when you have to climb into either of this car's two rows of rear passenger seats. This is the top-of-the-range GLX, which means the alloy wheels are standard. Top of the range or not, there is only one engine choice for the Ortega, this 1.4 litre naturally aspirated petrol with 70 kilowatts and 130 newton meters. Gearbox choices include the 5 speed manual in our test car or a 4 speed auto driving the front wheels. It may not offer absolute driving thrills, but this little motor does deliver somewhat of a fuel economy miracle. Not because it gets by without inflicting no damage at all on your petrol card, but because, for once, a manufacturer's fuel consumption claim is actually matched by the info on the trip computer. Suzuki says this car will do 6.6 .6 litres per 100 k's, and look, there it is. And believe me, I haven't been trying to drive this thing conservatively in the slightest. Although, realistically speaking, conservative speed is all you can hope for in this car. My lack of enthusiasm at driving a bigger than normal 1400 naturally aspirated car was replaced by, well, I suppose admiration is a fairly strong word, but it is a lot better than I thought it would be. It's perfectly adequate. In fact, the front end will even get a bit happy if you're too heavy with the accelerator in lower gears, either chirping the tires off the line or giving you a bit of understeer through a corner. It's never dangerous or scary, just surprising. Its open road ability is also decent, allowing you to cruise quite easily at the legal limit. If you do need to drop a gear for an overtake, the shift action of the manual gearbox is solid enough. What we haven't been able to do is load it to anywhere near its full capacity and then see how this motor does under those conditions at the reef. So it's not filled with driving fun, but this car does have something in common with its other Suzuki siblings, and that is a sense that it is really solidly engineered. It's never soft or wobbly, it doesn't feel incapable or unsafe. This LUV feels like the kind of thing you could actually live with every day. That's assuming you could look past the most horrendous bit of finishing, not just in its price bracket, but possibly ever fitted to any car in the last 40 years. Velour is bad, fake leather is worse, but the material that Suzuki have chosen for the interior of the Ortega is almost indescribably horrible. It's the kind of thing a very cheap motel might use as curtains or a bedspread if that motel was stuck in the 1970s and their interior designer was blind. It is truly horrible. Thankfully, the rest of the setup is actually pretty good. Standard bits across the range include electric windows, a trip computer and aircon, while our GLX test car gets a USB connection and a multifunction steering wheel. Also standard in the Otiga range is a third row of seats, and far from being inappropriate for any normally formed human being, the space they offer is actually passable for an average sized person. There is the option to fold away the third row and instead have good packing space, although it's not the best folding job in the world and there's no load cover. Some of those interior bits are questionable and the styling is debatable, but there's one thing about the Ortega you can't argue with, and that's value. Compared to a similarly spec Toyota Avanza or Nissan Grand Lavina, this top of the range Ortega is cheaper. Although you might want to budget just a little bit extra than its 193,000 Rand asking price, so you can buy yourself a set of decent seat covers.
The naturally aspirated 1400 does a good job of shifting the bigger than average Ortega, giving it good tractability off the line and good cruising ability. The seat material is the undoubted low light of a package that otherwise delivers on its intentions of offering good space and a comfortable, easy drive.